Patricia Manuel, also known as Priscilla Mooseburger and Miss Moose. And I'm going to put on my Auguste makeup, which is my most recent creation uh, for the past several years. I've been doing that instead of my signature white face because my character has evolved into a different character as I've gotten older and it's been a lot of fun. So I'm going to show you how I put on my Auguste face. Um, I am blind, which is part of the reason I switched over. And so I have to take my glasses off and get really close and use the scary side of the mirror. That's actually is too scary. <laughs> so for the first thing I'll start off with is the white. And I just take a little tiny bit and you can use clown white light or you can use regular white or a Ben Nye white, whatever you like. Um, just a high quality grease paint is really important, even for a light agoust. Uh, even on a light agoust face, mine is a, in between a classic agoust and a, and a theatrical uh, agoust face, if, if you will. But um, I think it's important for the white on your eyes to really pop. So... I'm going to spend some time putting that on. I notice you're patting it more than you're right. pulling it. Is there a reason for that? Well, I just like to... I have a lot, you know, as I've gotten older, it's kind of... You have loose skin that moves. And so it's it's actually easier to put it on patting it to get it where you want it to be. If you start pulling it, the skin pulls, and that doesn't always work as well. So if you do have looser skin on your eyelids, patting it instead of pulling it, you do have to pull it. It helps sometimes to hold your eye, the skin off of your eye like that, and that helps. The other thing that helps if you come up with a new face that you haven't done very often is tape it to the lid of your makeup box because that way you're like, oh, man, I don't exactly remember how that looks. And then you have a copy of it right there. Don't be afraid, especially if you don't do your makeup every day like when I was on the circus. I remember when I was a wee clown and it was before cameras were fancy and I had a picture like that you had to take to get developed picture Oh, sitting in my makeup case of my little clown face because I only put it on a couple times a year. So, yeah, good There's times. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you go, what shape was that again? <laughs> yeah, how is that though? This part always takes me, this shape always takes me the longest to get correct. And I'll fuss around with it quite a bit until I get it just right because it just, it's one of those things that, you know, everybody has that part on their makeup that takes longer. So this is going to take me a while and um, I'll come back when I'm done. I like to use a wet wipe and a Q-tip to kind of clean up my edges and... I did use a alcohol wipe to make sure my face was super clean, especially if you use a baby wipe because a baby wipe sometimes has emollients and ingredients in it, moisturizers that can mess with your makeup. So even if you clean your face off, like I had real lady makeup on, clean it off with a wet wipe, then use an alcohol wipe to make sure it's super, super clean. All right, so that's that part. The next part the white is the muzzle. And try to stick right in here. I like to use the back of my hand. That makes it really easy to not get any, and the makeup's really even. So I don't get chunks because with an agoust face you're not smearing it all over so you want to be really strategic on where you put the white 
because you're not using as much. So I'm even more careful with how much I put on because it's harder to take off. Also, it's easier not to rub makeup on another surface if it's on the back of your hand right than if it's on the heel like of your palm because i can hold the mirror and still work off of my hand like a palette because i really need to hold the mirror because i can't see as well that was a big factor in me letting go of my white face was not being able to wear contacts anymore um i finally my doctor just said well you're gonna have to have cheaters too even with contacts it's like i can't um do that so it was like okay Let's figure this out. And I always thought, you know, for teaching clowning for almost, you know, 30 some years, it's, uh, I always told people not to be afraid to try something new. So I wanted to be. Follow my own advice. Okay. This is a Q-tip moment. So she did it really fast, but she used her own spit to <laughs> wet the Q-tip so that she can use it to get all those edges cleaner. I like these edges up front, up top here to be really sharper, but a little fuzzier down here. A little softer. Because she's going to put blush down there later. Right. I like to powder this. I like that because the problem is, is with creases in your eyes and creases in your lips. And then when you get that crepey skin, as you get older, um, the sooner I powder this, the better. So I'm going to be right back. Make sure that my, um, pow my puff is really primed and I stretch my mouth. To make sure I get the powder in the creases of my lip, of my eye. This is an old puff that's got lots of powder in it, but if you get a new puff, you have to really be sure to prime it really well. Prime it means fill, fill it, it with full, powder. Yep, fill it full of powder. And I can fold this in half and get into my creases around my eye. Under your eye is really tough to get. Look up, even though your eyes are closed, that stretches out the skin. There, I'm good. Three. Cadillac brush. It's a goat hair brush, a baby brush, made in Germany. The bristles are super tight and dense, but super soft. You can get it in your eye socket, which is nice to get that powder out. And, uh, Get the excess off around the corners. I always end up brushing it in between. That's just a habit I learned from an old circus clown, master clown, Frosty Little. Said I'd, in case he would pick up any colors. I don't have any colors on now, but he said if I pick up any colors with my brush, I'll take them off on the hairs on my arm. So now I'm ready for the next step. The next step is the base. I think it's really important to wear a base, even if you perform indoors. Uh, it, it just makes your face look richer. The light reflects off your face better. It evens out your skin tone, and it really is a way more professional look than your natural, just your skin. Um, I use a color. This one is called Juvenile. But you can see already, just by putting that flesh tone on, it it evens out the skin tone. It just looks better. It's okay. I know some uh, in some situations, you might be in a hurry or you don't um, want to do the uh, base coat. But I'll tell you, if you go outside, you could get a really weird sunburn because it's not going to tan where your white is. And it won't take long for there to be a weird reaction. Also, uh, it just looks better in photographs. Again, this is a, a great product because it has a lot of pigment in it. So I don't need to use a lot 
to get that coverage I'm looking for. I've heard some people do their white and their base as one layer and then powder it together. Is that wrong? No, that's that's fine. I do it the other way. I powder that white right away because I'm older and I want to make sure that it doesn't separate into the wrinkles in, around my mouth and over my eyes. When you're younger or if you don't have wrinkles, it's easy to do it. And that's called a, a the wet method. They used to call that where you do your whole face and then you powder last. I like to powder in sections. It just, um, it works better for me that way. But there's a lot of different ways to put on makeup. This is one way to do it. It's a real basic way that works pretty well for 99% of the people who try it. But you might come up with little tricks and things that you do differently than what's the average. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's skin type is different. Everybody's abilities are different. So there isn't just one way to do it. I will say one thing about the wet method that's nice is, as you can see, Trisha using this sponge around the edges, you don't have to worry as much about cutting your white because since it's still liquid, it does it for you as you go around. You can do it at the same time you're doing your base because that just kind of goes against the edge of the white. But that's just one way to do it. There's yep. lots of ways. Um, also, you can fix things because once you've powdered this white, it's set. And if you make a mistake and it's powdered, it's harder to fix. You can fix it harder. So that is another reason why some people wait till the end. This is a big jumbo um, magic color cream crayon called True Red. Since uh, Miron stopped making their jumbo pencils, I do have the Ben Nye pencils. They're, they're really a good, it's a good pencil and it fits into the duo sharpener. So you don't have to get a different sharpener. Why the... It's got great pigment. No, I got to talk, talk funny. It's got great pigment in it. And it's just, for me, it's super easy to roll on, especially if you're, if you are used to putting on lipstick or some sort of like gloss or whatever. Uh, it's, it's a lot like using that, just like a giant lip liner. Yeah, it's super easy. Now I'm going to use a, Pencil. It's a Miron Pro Pencil. Absolutely black. It's a soft pencil that's really easy to do detail work with. You didn't cut out that part beforehand. Is there a reason? No. I did it because there's enough pigment in these in the black that it goes right over the white. You don't need to cut out for the black. The red you do because it will get uh, mix in and be pinky. But for whatever reason, the black is just the pigment it takes to make black will go right over the white. There you go. And I always, you know, when I set up my space, just to kind of make life easier, I'll sharpen all my pencils before I sit down to put my makeup on. I just make sure I have everything I need just to keep from making myself crazy. Now, you know, let's just talk about age. I have a crack over that always forms over on this side of my mouth. And it used to really bother me. And then I'm like, you know what? If they notice that, I'm moving too slow. So you may have those little issues um, as you get older with your makeup. It's okay. Once you have your whole outfit on with your color and your wig and your makeup and everything, no one's going to notice those little imperfections, just you. So let it go.
And that's about having your eyebrows where your muscles are so you can get a lot of movement out of it. And they're both a little, they're not always perfect. This, especially because I haven't been doing it as long as many years. And it's okay because your face is constantly in motion. Your eyebrows are supposed to be sisters, not twins. Hey, that's a good... I like that. I like it. Sometimes my eyebrows are cousins. <laughs> Is that so? That's okay, because they're still family. There we go. Okay, that's good. This is a hard thing for some people to do that over the eye liner. I will also over, I'll go over this again with this really cool Ben Knight Precision Eyeliner. And it's, Ooh, it's, ah. the, it's got the, uh, let me show you on my hand. This has like a, a felt tip pen and you can get really nice points with it. Um, but I'll do that after I've powdered. Yeah, that's better after you powder. Yeah. Because if you do it before you powder, then you'll get the wet makeup in that little brush, and then it will never be the same wetness again. Right. But the dryness, it's okay. Yep. Don't ask me how I know that. <sighs> but you do. I okay. do. I'm going to powder this. You shouldn't really brush your pow or powder or brush your powder off over your makeup. Close up all your makeup if you need to be nearby so that you don't get powder in your makeup. I'm kind of leaning back away from it. It gets when gross. I brush the powder off. When I got colors on, I try and be really careful to brush so I don't smear anything. I like to have a mirror handy so I can be very careful and do it lightly until I'm sure that you can see a good brush will take the powder, more of the powder off. The other thing you may notice is that it'll, you will powder and it'll look like you've got it all dry. And then if you wait around a little bit, you'll be like, oh, and you'll see that the grease absorbed the powder, but there's still wetter spots and you have to go back and powder a little bit more. This is really important for, um, long days of performing to make sure that you get it nice and dry. My clown friend Brian would put his powder on. And then he would let it sit. Yes. And he would just kind of absorb. Kinda... Yep. Especially because I, I would assume that uh, knowing Brian that he had more oily skin. So it needed to just suck in as much powder as possible. Well, he it was like he tried it out one time and he went, oh, this went really well. And then he started doing it every time. And he would just let it sit. I don't know exactly how long. I think it varied every day. But then he'd brush it all off and he'd be good. Yeah. It depends on the temperature. We used to do that. This is dry now. I have now have a dry face, so I can add my colors. I like a little bit of green on my eyes, and this is totally powder. And I use one of these little tiny brushes because I don't want to overdo it. Now, that is a dry pigment, so you have to put it on dry makeup. So dry on dry, wet on wet. And the it really... Pops. If I would go and try and buy uh, re uh, Real Lady Cosmetics and try and do this, you're just not going to get that intensity, even if it looks like it, because they don't have the pigments. Oh, and I was telling uh, Mom about this earlier when I was doing my makeup. So... These are really fun and really pigmented, but the problem is sometimes you get your brush full of it, like way too full, and then when you put it on your eyes, it drips down and like... Little speckles. Down under your eyes. Sometimes I get blush because I do my nose on the top of my lip, and I, I want to freak out because you have color where you don't want it. Don't freak out. If you use your powder brush, sometimes that white baby powder will help null the vibrancy and yeah. get it back to white and it'll brush off together. 
So I'll sometimes put a little powder where that is. I don't press it in. I just put a little powder over the top and then I'll brush it off with a powder brush and that'll get rid of it. So don't worry. It's okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. Even though I know you want to. So is that oh. wineberry pink? Yep, this is wineberry pink in a circle. Trying to bring back the life that you took out of your face by putting the flesh tone on it. And these are just, you can keep adding more makeup and it'll just get more intense. You're just layering more pigment on and more pigment on. And it'll get brighter and brighter. That will not happen with um, regular, regular cosmetics. cosmetics. From the uh, you can put you can keep putting tons of it on, but it will not get this intense because it just doesn't have the pigment in it. Okay. I just put a little on my chin, a little on my nose, because I wear a nose in a string, and sometimes I sneeze like, too hard. Yeah, it just just in case I have to take it off. Um, I go up above like that. I don't. There, I'm going to use the liner pencil because I have a really detailed um, design I do around my eye. And I really need this because a pencil won't get do it and it dries really fast, which is really helpful because it's because I have wrinkles under my eyes. So I have to, it's opening your mouth stretches the skin by your eyes. And then I can get that little bit of a detail underneath my eye. So you can try to do that with a grease pencil, but no matter how much you sharpen it, if you get it that sharp, the tip breaks every time. Yeah. Even can. as a professional, it there is no way to do that without it with it being super sharp and not break. So this liquid eyeliner is perfect. For tiny details like that. And it dries really fast, which is super nice. And it dries super black, which is very nice. Like butter. Now just make sure. It, it does dry pretty quick, but you can't open your eyes too fast yeah, all I the way. Yeah, do that. Because otherwise, when you open them, it'll stick to the top lid of your eyelid. Correct. And then you will be sad because it'll be very obvious. That you're schmutzed it. But if that happens, just put on really big false eyelashes. No or one will notice. You can take a Q-tip, put a little dot of baby oil on it, and erase it. And then have to go back over it. But With the wants, white. Who really wants to mess around with that? No you one. have to. Um, nobody does. I Ain't like nobody got time for that. I like Maybelline. If you just don't know what kind of eye, this isn't very expensive. It works really well. The nice thing about having powder on your eyelashes make thickens them. I've had a lot of luck with you know this as a. Mascara, it's not too wet. Sometimes some of those are uh, fancier ones are a little wet. And if you're not really good at this, this is good because it's not a real wet kind of a mascara. The real wet ones also, if you open your eyes too wide and it's not dry, will yeah, schmutz yeah. You your... Schmutz. You're like, Wee. So. Definitely. Very wham. Very wham. Um... I do like to put on uh, rhinestones. I have some itty bitty oops, rhinestones. My glue out. And I also like to do. Let's see. So here I have. You can get them in the craft store. And 
I have some little tiny ones. What kind of glue do you use? I just use latex and they get powder on them. So I stick them in my mouth. Sorry if it's gross. It's just, <laughs> I'm an old, I'm an, I'm an old trooper. So I used to use latex and my eyes are sensitive. So I can't put, use that glue for around my eyes. It bothers me. So if that is the case for you, or maybe if you have a latex allergy, I use eyelash glue. Uh, I use a Revlon brand, uh, but it's clear in the bottle. So, you know, there's no latex in it, but I get it at your local pharmacy in the eyelash section because apparently there is an eyelash section in most well, local there's pharmacies. there's a lot more available than there used to be. Yeah. I mean, you had, um, when I was on the show, you'd have to get eyelashes from a theatrical company. Now there's all different kinds of eyelashes. You can do the, the magnetic ones where you paint on a, a strip and then your eyelashes will magnetically stick to them. I mean, there's all kinds of cool things you can do. Oh, for sure. But just make sure that it has a little brush applicator because that's a lot easier than those squeezy tubes. Oh, the squeezy tubes just an accident waiting to happen. And they're very messy, especially when they make the glue black. Oh, you just want to cry. But anyway, this is better and it helps. Or you could just use liquid latex like this one over here. Beautiful. And then to finish it all off, I highly recommend this miracle product. It's called Barrier Spray. And you can see that it's a, still, my face is a little bit hazy. I'm going to show you how to put on Barrier Spray in just a second. I'm going to finish with barrier spray. Uh, for years, people have talked about spraying water on their face, taking wet, damp paper towels. What this does is it removes the excess powder and gets rid of the haze, which is great because then your makeup's bright again. However, the downside of that is the water and taking off the powder means your face is going to break down faster and not look as good as long. So what's the answer? This great little clear product called barrier spray and what it does is it bonds with the powder to, uh, the haze does go away. You'll see that in just a second, but it makes your makeup last longer. And I was really surprised by it. I've tried it later and was like, wow, this really works. And all the reports from all my clowns that use it tell me how great it is. Uh, the thing to remember, especially not necessarily a new bottle, but an old bottle, is make sure that this is clear because sometimes it glues shut. And then it can shoot a stream out, and that's not a good thing. You want it to be a spritz. Um, you don't want to get this in your eyes because it'll burn. And you will be sad. And you will be very sad. So what I like to do is I start further out and then move in so that I can, because every time you, you know, every bottle squirts a little bit different. So I'll close my eyes lightly, not squeeze them really tight, and uh, spray my face. Want to make sure I get everywhere. You can always go back. And then because the stuff burns, if I have to get moving, you can use a paper plate, the lid to your makeup case, whatever. But this makes sure that it dries and I don't get it in my eyes. To I'll, be bat, I'll bat my eyes like that to make sure I don't have any excess on my eyelashes. To be clear, it wasn't burning before you used the fan, correct? It just burns if you open your, your eyes, eyes too quick. If you open your eyes too soon, it will burn. And uh, you can see that my face is bright. The haze is gone. The powder, the little bit of powder haze is gone. And now my makeup will really last for a really long time. Even if I, um, I'm out in sweating and running around, it's really great. So this has been... Really good for me when I switched from white face to a goose because you notice that haze much, much more on an agoust face. So that's where the barrier spray is awesome. But I also used it on my white face because it would keep it from getting grainy when your makeup starts to separate, especially if you're in warm weather. Another product that you might want to consider in warm weather is a skin prep. It used to be called uh, No Sweat by Miron and they... Ref they changed it, upgraded it, and now it's called Skin Prep Pro. Excellent. You put it on your face. If you have a, if you sweat or have oily skin, you put that on first. It's a clear liquid. 
It'll kind of make your face feel tight. But then you put your makeup on and voila, it, your face doesn't sweat. And if you have a sweaty face and are, you know, clowning in a lot of warm and humid weather, Skin Prep Pro is an awesome product and you'll really like that as well. Uh, barrier spray is that. It's a barrier. If you have sensitive skin, you can put the barrier spray on first. I don't have sensitive skin, so I don't have to do that. But if you have sensitive skin, put the barrier spray on first and then put your makeup on. If you ever have to put on colors like blue or green or whatever for a play or whatever, um, barrier spray is awesome. It keeps the makeup from soaking into your pores and it comes off easier. So that's uh, Barrier Spray is an awesome product. I can't uh, say enough about it. And uh, that's what I got. Now I got my face on. <laughs>